Welcome students and teachers. Uh, if we ask students uh, where will be the sun at exactly 12 o'clock noon time, a lot of them will answer uh, that it will be exactly overhead which will not be the case uh, most of the time. Uh, in this video we will learn why is that the case and why sun makes this beautiful eight like figure in the sky uh, throughout the year. So let us dive in. Before we proceed, one very important warning, in this video we will talk about photographing and uh, looking at the sun, uh, but it is very important to note that both looking at sun or photographing through any optics can damage your eyes or the equipments and these observations must be done only under professional supervision or when you have uh, all the required uh, arrangements and equipments. So with this warning, let us move on. So, if you photograph sun every day at exactly the same time, so uh, UTC time is uh, just past midnight, but this was done uh, in the morning. Every 24 hours, if you photograph the sun around the year, you will notice this eight like figure sun draws and there is specific reason for this. It is widely believed that you will uh, see the sun at exactly same time every 24 hours. Commonly people believe that sun must be exactly at the same position uh, at the same time every day, but that is not the case. Uh, depending on what time you photograph, this figure 8 can rotate, but more or less this is the pattern what will be drawn in the sky. It is not limited just for the earth. Uh, if you do the same experiment on Mars, several rovers in Mars uh, have landed there and photographed the sun. If you do it in, in an interval multiple of one solar day, so the, in this case it will be solar Martian day. If you do it in that interval, you will see sun making instead of a 8 like figure a roughly a teardrop like figure. So these are the uh, phenomena that almost every planet you will see from almost every solar system body and the consequence of this is APOD photo which in a lot of video it has featured. So in this image which we have talked uh, earlier as well, the sun does not rise exactly due east every day. In fact, the rising point of sun shifts throughout the year and it has a similar reason for why we see the NLMA like figure. Both of these phenomena are due to the same reason which we will discuss. One valid question should arise, how will a sundial work with such a situation? Because when we measure the direction of the shadow and we uh, measure the time, uh, that shadow will depend on where sun is and if sun is not at the same position at the same time, then this should not work and that is uh, exactly the case. In fact, we have to add or subtract uh, time uh, in, in a sundial uh, which we call equation of time and we have to take this into account that sun shifts its position. Let us understand few concepts first. One is called true sun. This is based on where sun exactly is. So if we calculate the time as provided by correct uh, sundial as time uh, seen by the sundial uh, that is what uh, true sun position would be and you could measure this as uh, the hour angle of the sun plus 12 hours uh, that will give you true sun. In comparison mean sun is where the sun would have been or calculated position of sun if sun was moving uniformly across the celestial equator. Uh, we know that is not the case because of tilt of the rotation of axis of the earth. So, if that was the case, if sun was actually moving uniformly across the celestial equator with uniform angular velocity, uh, we would not see the concept of NLMA and there would have been no concept of equation of time, everything would have been as expected. But because there is a difference between these two uh, and difference could be as uh, much as 16 minute, we have to take this into account and how we measure this is called equation of time. So two things, two major uh, factors that affect uh, equation of time. Uh, one is uh, the earth's orbit is not circular, it is eccentric, it is elliptical. So therefore, speed of the earth uh, along the orbit is not uh, uniform, it varies. Uh, because of that, sun's position in sky that also uh, varies, that uh, does not follow uniform speed. And another is uh, the this angle, the uh, obliquity of ecliptic. So let us uh, talk about them one by one. So we have discussed before how we define solar time is the time difference between two successive culmination of sun is how you define a solar day. Now if earth was orbiting uniformly, what would happen in 
once it completes one sidereal rotation, it will sweep uh, roughly 1 degree in its orbit, but sun will not be at culmination yet. Instead, it has to rotate for another 4 minute for it points towards sun again. Now, understand what will happen if earth orbits slightly faster, then at that time it will be ahead of where it is supposed to be and in another 4 minutes it will not be able to point towards sun. So, sun will be slightly towards east compared to where it was supposed to be had the orbit be circular uh, and similar case if uh, earth would be orbiting slowly. So, this will cause some lateral shift uh, in the position of the sun from east to west and obliquity of the ecliptic will also cause an issue even if eccentricity was 0. Since the sun moves along ecliptic at an angle compared to celestial equator, what would happen that the right ascension of sun will no longer move uniformly and compared to mean sun, it will at some point be ahead of the mean sun or behind the mean sun. The, the net result what we, uh, we use it, wherever the true sun is due to all these uh, effects, all these phenomena minus the mean sun that is uh, if there was no eccentricity, if there was no obliquity, whatever the calculated position of sun would have been, that quantity is called the equation of time. We generally measure this in minutes and now how exactly these parameters affect our equation of time and the NLMR. So, before that we have to understand that since earth orbits in an ellipse, we have to consider some of the geometrical angles and we will uh, understand them. One is the true anomaly. So, we know sun is at the focus of this ellipse and from the perihelion when where earth is at the closest, the angle made if the planet is at position B, the angle made as compared to the periapsis that is our true anomaly. If we project uh, the position of the planet to a uniform circle, uh, angle from that projected point with respect to periapsis is eccentric anomaly. Now, these two are related based on the eccentricity of the ellipse. Wherever the planet is, we can always get its uh, eccentric anomaly and true anomaly because the planet does not orbit in the uniform speed. We define something called mean anomaly. For mean anomaly, we assume the planet is in the circular orbit and moving uniformly. So, in that case, um, true and eccentric anomaly will be the same and that is uh, that will be our mean anomaly. So, uh, let us consider this uh, geometry of anomaly and its angle slightly more closely. Uh, please note at this point, uh, we are not considering any Keplerian orbit or any Newton's law. This is just a geometrical concept how these angles are defined. So, if we take any position on this ellipse, the blue one is the ellipse. Uh, for any given point, we can define these two angles. Uh, for uh, eccentric anomaly, we have to define a circle with the radius as the semi major axis. So, the projection of that point gives us the eccentric angle and angle as measured from the focus is true anomaly. Now, if point at the focus was sun and this was earth, the true anomaly would be equivalent to ecliptic longitude of the sun because this will actually govern where sun appears to be in the sky. However, one interesting thing to note, the eccentric anomaly and the true anomaly are related by an uh, algebraic relation. If you know one of them, you can figure out the other. If the uh, planet was not in an uh, elliptical orbit, but in a circular orbit, focus would become the center and both of these angle would actually be the same and the, uh, both the value of both of these uh, angles will actually be your mean anomaly. So, now con let us consider what would happen if we take into account the Keplerian laws of orbit. All right. Now, if we consider how the planet orbits, we would notice that when it is closer to the sun, it sweeps by really fast and when it is away from the sun or the star, it's, it slows down because it has to sweep equal area in equal time. This green angle will be uh, eccentric anomaly and this angle uh, around the focus is actually our true anomaly and if we consider a body moving at uniform speed, the angle that that object makes is our mean anomaly. Uh, calculating these anomaly could be a, a tedious task which we will discuss in later video. Uh, there are few special cases where this calculation becomes very simple. First of all, for zero eccentric uh, anomaly, uh, both the true and the mean will be same. Also, 
at exactly halfway point again all three will be the same because planet has to sweep equal area in equal time so half the area has to be swept in half the time at the symmetric angle and by definition the uh, eccentric anomaly and the tr uh, true anomaly also will be the same these special cases will come handy wh when we understand the equation of time right so now let's look at what will be the consequences of these uh, different phenomena if earth was in exactly circular orbit and no obliquity what we would see we would see sun along the celestial equator moving uniformly and in every 24 hour interval sun's apparent position in the sky would be exactly at the same position and sun dial will show the true time hmm. if we take into account the obliquity but eccentricity is still zero uh, so although sun will orbit in a uniform uh, speed uh, in the uniform angular velocity it will be at an angle from the celestial equator because of which the declination and the ra will vary both of them will no longer be uniform so the declination starting from it crosses the vernal equinox it will be zero rise up to the maximum uh, declination of the obliquity angle then again come back to zero goes to negative of obliquity angle and then back to zero and its projection along celestial equator will also have a similar behavior and because of that it will either be ahead of the mean sun or behind the mean sun so as the sun moves uh, along the ecliptic over here we have introduced one purple dot that is the mean sun where the sun would have been along the celestial equator if there was no obliquity and no eccentricity was moving uniformly compared to the array of the sun so red dot right uh, is the array because it's lagging behind it is uh, red in color so as we move along uh, after it reaches the sum summer solstice the uh, array of the sun uh, now leads now it's in blue color and it continues till autumnal equinox and then so on and so forth and we can see that the, the north south motion of the sun uh, causes one factor in the equation of time uh, because the array of sun no, is no longer uniform so just for clarification in the previous uh, figure it might appear that uh, the, the declination or the equation of time they have a sinusoidal behavior that is true only when the obliquity angle is small in this case obliquity is uh, clo close to 70 degree and we could see the declination as a function of time more has a triangular shape instead of sinusoidal for a planet with much higher obliquity uh, th this function will change now if, if we ignore the obliquity and we consider eccentric orbit what we will notice because the planet will have a varying speed what will happen at some point sun will slow down so at some point it will speed up and it will be either ahead of mean sun or, or, or behind and that will correspond another factor of equation of time in this animation the eccentricity is highly exaggerated that's why the equation of time goes up to a uh, few hundreds of minutes this is just to exaggerate this uh, phenomena if you consider the earth's eccentricity which is roughly 0 0.016 this will uh, go around uh, 8 minutes or so one more thing our zero point mark is where the earth is at the closest point uh, the perihelion and in the previous figure the zero point uh, marked where the sun was at equinox both of these are not necessarily same uh, they are not same in the case of earth we have to adjust for that before we move on and that's the third factor for equation of time and analemma what is the difference in longitude from periapsis to vernal equinox so three factors which we have discussed the eccentricity the obliquity ecliptic longitude difference between periapsis and the vernal equinox so now let's look at both of these uh, effects combined over here we have shifted the obliquity effect at periapsis both are aligned the obliquity has twice the frequency of uh, of this sign like behavior than that of eccentricity and it crosses zero at four points these are the equinoxes and the solstice and eccentricity uh, for half the orbit it has equation of time in the negative value and rest of the half in the positive okay so if we change this vernal equinox to a different uh, longitude you see this entire graph just shifted a little but because of that equation of time it changed so there is nothing special about what the shape of this uh, equation of time is it's just how these values happen to be 
and for different planets uh, these values can be different causing different equation of time right so similarly if you see if you have very high uh, obliquity uh, you shift from sinusoidal to slightly uh, skewed curve that uh, affects your equation of time in this case it was dominated by that uh, if you also change eccentricity to some other value let's say then uh, again we can have variations of equation of time what this equation of time tells us is how much the sun lags behind or leads compared to the mean sun. So, this governs the lateral movement and the vertical movement is governed by the declination of the sun which is due to the inclination. Given both of these uh, combined, we can now draw the analemma. So, this is one analemma generator, we encourage you to play around with this. So, what uh, it does? Based on how the declination changes and equation of time, you can mathematically generate how the analemma would look like. So, uh, you can through the slider adjust the eccentricity, the obliquity and the difference in longitude. You can adjust and see how eccentricity changes. So, we no longer have this 8 like figure and if I keep increasing, it becomes egg like, it may become slightly elliptical. Uh, obliquity uh, has a significant change. Web page also allows you to go to a different planet, let us say Mars. And in Mars again we see, we see this teardrop like uh, shape which was uh, seen by the Mars pathfinder in the initial videos. And this is how one can identify what happens if eccentricity is 0, what happens if obliquity is very high and so on and so forth and try to understand how equation of time and change in declination is actually causing these things. So, if we see throughout the year, uh, if we photograph the sun at interval of 24 hours or multiple of 24 hours, we will see the sun moving in this 8 like shape called analemma. Since in the beginning of the video we have warned not to do this uh, unprepared, what students can do is use a vertical stick, the shadow of it at exactly same time every day would again follow this path. You could choose few days throughout the year, no need to do this every day. Uh, sometimes uh, the clouds will not let you uh, do this experiment anyways. What we see at some particular day, the sun rises from the near east, not exactly due east, follows this purple curve which is parallel to the celestial equator, reaches at some point in this analemma and you get that shadow. This point changes every day. Now, although we have chosen time which is not noon, you notice that it never goes near the zenith. So, if you are within Tropic of Capricorn and Tropic of Cancer, there will be some moment where at noon the sun will be overhead. In fact, there will be only twice such moments except for uh, 23 and a half degree plus and minus. Rest only twice a year you will have no shadow day where the sun will be exactly overhead uh, during noon time. This is we are considering local noon. Of course, if a country follows a uh, standardized time, uh, then it is possible that when your clock says 12 pm, it is not the time of shortest shadow. So, considering all these things, one could understand how these things behave. That is all from this video. If you have any doubts or any comments, if you would like to know about any other topic, do let us know in the comments. Thank you.